this and so uh, I remember years ago our uh, youth at a church I was serving in did a scavenger hunt you know that's where you go out and you find different things on a list and you make movies of it and then you come back and the team that gets back the first and has all the things that were on the list they kind of win the prize and uh, one of the young men in our church who was leading the youth got back before anybody else and boy he put his uh, thing up on the screen when the time came the only problem was he had reversed his video camera and he cut it off when they were looking at the object on the and cut it back on when they got in the van so all you'd see was the feet in the van and you'd hear the back and forth talking in the van and then it would go off and then the next thing you'd see is feet again people getting on the van so so all of his pictures were nothing but people getting in and out of the van so that'd be about the way i i would do uh, the video so uh, but uh yeah, what i want to talk with you about tonight is uh Praying like the saints in the Bible. Praying like the saints of old. And I'm going to mention to you five very short prayers that were prayed by somebody in the Bible. Uh, there were a little bit more words than the two words I'm giving, but two, two words that a very wonderful saint prayed. And I'll, I'll just get you to try to guess who, who they are. First one is the first prayer that anybody ought to pray whether they're a child or whether they're a teenager or an adult, this ought to be our first prayer. And that prayer was, search me. Search, search me. Who in the Bible prayed, search me? Jeremiah. Close. David. Close. David. We've heard Isaiah and Jeremiah. David. David. Yes, indeed. David in Psalm 139 in verse 23 of that psalm, he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me. That's the first prayer we need to pray, isn't it? Lord, look into my heart and see. what you know Whether it's a child coming under conviction and asking God to search for wrongdoing and to be cleansed and to be saved and made whole. Uh, search me. That's, that's sort of the, the very first prayer. Shine the spotlight of your word into my heart and, and, and search me and see what, what is there. I remember years ago I was in high school. Now I'm getting an echo. I wonder why that is. Oh, my. I just have to try to deal with it, I guess. I, I was in high school, and the high school uh, club that I was in uh, was kind of a new, new club, and we were sent to Detroit for a club convention of uh, high school uh, students, Detroit, Michigan. We were li I was living in Columbus, Georgia at that time. Had never been anywhere much, and so going to Detroit was sort of a big thing. It, it wasn't all the rust conditions today and horrible conditions. It was the up and coming, uh, you know, car, automobile industry uh, city. And so we went there for this convention. We, uh, several of us Georgia boys walked around in Detroit after the convention closed one night, just kind of seeing the sights of the big city. And we saw this sign with a, uh, this building with a banner over it, grand opening. And we looked and it was the Detroit police station that had built a brand new modern uh, technical police station and jail facility and we just went in there and we said well we're boys from columbus georgia and we're just interested in this so they gave us a tour and i remember one of the things we did we we signed our names and in every part of the police station and the jail that we went in up on this big screen were were our names, just like we had signed. Well, we thought that was really pretty cool. Now, you know, that wouldn't be anything, but uh, it, it was at that time. And then, you know, they saw that we were taking all this in, and so they lined us up outside of a door and then opened the door and let us go in one at a time, and there was this bright light that was shining, and a voice came over the uh, PA and said, you people stand back against the wall. So, of course, all of us stood, stood back against the wall, this bright light uh, shining on us. And then a voice said, uh, number five, 
Jesus. And you looked up, and up above each of you were numbers. Uh, and, and they said, number five, where were you Saturday night, such and such and such? Well, we began to confess things that we hadn't even done. You know, we, uh, we, we, I, I think they, uh, if they had wanted to pin any crimes on us, they could have done that that night. Because standing in that search light, that bright light, uh, with that voice speaking out, just made you feel so accused and you know, perhaps, uh, done, you know, maybe thought you'd done things that you hadn't done. Well, uh, better than that is God's searchlight when he shines inside our hearts and reveals uh, what is there. And so we need to be like David and pray, search me, oh God. Did well, there's Psalm no... Psalm 1, did you say? Ma'am, Psalm 139. Psalm 139, and, and that's verse 23 and 24, Psalm 139. All right, second prayer is, save me. Save me. Who do you remember that prayed that prayer? Save me. Well, New Testament, I'll give you that. New Testament. Save me. On the walk and on the wall. Yes, that's it. Yes, Simon Peter. And that's found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. That's Simon Peter, Matthew 14, verse 30. And we won't go through all that story. You know the story, but just uh, uh, read, read the particular verse. But when Simon Peter saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. So uh, yes, you, you know that uh, Jesus was walking on the water and the disciples saw him. They, they were afraid. But Simon Peter, bold, came to the edge of the boat and said, Lord, bid me come to you. And Jesus said, get out of the boat and come. And Simon Peter got out of the boat. And he too was walking on water until, as the scripture says, he saw the waves and he felt the wind and he got afraid. And I've heard preachers preach about this. And I've even seen pictures that they indicate that Simon Peter sort of slid down in the water sort of slow. I don't think so. I think he went down like a rock. You know, Jesus nicknamed him the rock. I think he went bloop, up and, uh, you know, back up. Sometimes you, you know, you, uh, if you feel like you're drowning, you go down twice and you come up that third time. I think he just went straight down and came back up and, you know, reached up that hand, Lord, save me. You know, he, uh, he was uh, drowning in the water. And, of course, Jesus reached out, the Bible says, and pulled him up and walked Simon Peter uh, across on back safely uh, to the boat. But save me. That prayer that all of us have to pray. That uh, that's the only way we get into the kingdom. If God has searched us and the Holy Spirit has convicted us and we recognize our sin, we say, Lord, save me. I, I can't do it on my own. I, I won't be able to. I can't save myself. I remember we used to have a, a training in evangelism program that had a little drawing of a person in the water reaching down and trying to pull himself up out of the water. Well, it ain't going to happen, is it? Nobody's going to be. I, every once in a while I hear somebody say, well, I'm a self-made man. And I want to say, no, you're not. There's no such thing as a self-made man. There's no such thing as self-made salvation. We don't pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps or pull ourselves up out, out of the out of the sin uh, Jesus has to do that Lord save me well the third one of these and I know you'll probably get this one is show me, show me. Old Testament show me Moses. people on the phone can ask that too yes ma'am show me is Moses and that's found in in Exodus chapter 33 you remember that uh, that Moses had uh, God had called Moses into the service of redeeming the people and bringing them out of Israel, and uh, he had he had met God at the burning bush, and then in uh, Exodus chapter thirty three, verse thirteen and verse eighteen, verse thirteen says Moses is speaking. Now therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight. Show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And then in verse 18, it says, and, and Moses said, please show me your glory. Show me. Well, I, I think that's a, that's a good prayer that for any of us to pray. Show me your way. Show me your glory. 
you remember God said to Moses at that time, I can't show you my full self. I can't show you my full face and my full glory. I'll just kind of show you a little portion of my, my glory. And, and God did that. But I, I think, you know, right now, I think the prayer of Dale Wood would be, Lord, show us your glory. We, you, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to just look back on glory days of the past or we don't just want to hope for some glory days in the future. We want to see the glory, the goodness, the grace, the greatness of God. Lord, show me. So like Moses tonight, I think we ought to pray that God would show us his way and show us his glory. Now this one you're going to get for sure. Another Old Testament character. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Who prayed that one? Strengthen me. Samson. What? Samson. Samson. Samson is the very one who said, you remember the story of Samson. That, that's found in Judges chapter 16, verse 28. And we'll read that one. Judges 16, 28. And that's a story that we're all familiar with. Samson, uh, the strong, strong man who was weak in so many ways, wasn't he? He had uh, great strength. You know, uh, the uh, uh, one, one of my preachers that I have listened to a lot through the years is J. Vernon McGee. J. Vernon McGee said, Samson's always pictured as this big, muscle-bound giant of a man. J. Vernon McGee said, I don't think so. I think he was a very normal-looking man. Not this muscle-bound uh, character. And the reason Vernon McGee said that is once Samson had disobeyed and allowed his hair to be cut and just disobeyed against God, the Philistines came in on him, and he was just like any other man. He, so he wouldn't have just all of a sudden lost all of his muscle power if it had all been just physical muscle. It was the Spirit of God coming on him that gave him that kind of strength. But, you know, uh, let's, let's just read that. Judges chapter 16 verse 28 and that's at the close of his life after he had been duped by the various women that he had fallen in love with and uh, gotten arrested by the Philistines and blinded you know somebody said sin finds you sin blinds you sin grinds you he had been found out by Satan and he had been captured by the Philistines and he was in the in the grinding at the at the mill and then he asked a, a young servant there of the philistines to lead him into the temple of of the, the god of the philistines and he went in there and you remember he found the pillars of the temple the strong pillars and he pushed them his strength returned his hair had begun to grow out his strength re returned and he said samson called out to the lord saying "O lord god remember me i pray thee strengthen me i pray thee just this once O god that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. Lord, strengthen me. Um, I, I don't know about y'all, but that's, I think that's a prayer we all need to pray. Lord, strengthen me. We, we recognize our, our failing strength, those of us in here. We're not all old, but we're older. And uh, as, as we get older, those on the phone too, we, we know that uh, we need to pray for that extra strength that God gives to us, that, that strength that only comes uh, from him. Uh, when I was uh, growing up in high school, we had a, a, a couple in the church named the Casses, uh, Mr. W.B. Cass and his wife, uh, Mrs. Cass, we, uh, we, we called her. Mrs. Cass was one of those ladies who just was a, a prayer warrior. Uh, uh, if if there, anybody needed prayer, they'd go see Miss Cass. They continued to come to church, even into their old years when I was a teenager. They drove an old Model T automobile, and they would park it out in front of the church on a hillside because oftentimes after church, he'd go out there and it wouldn't crank, and so us boys and several others would push that car off, and he'd, uh, he'd get it. Uh, Mr. Cass would get it started. Well, they had grown uh, older, and Mr. Cass had died, and Mrs. Cass was in a, a facility, and I had come home from school. I, I, Jolene and I had met, and we were engaged to get married, uh, looking forward to years ahead, you know, all of that. 
Uh, and I came home to visit with mom and mom said, have you seen Miss Cass lately? I said, no, mama, I, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen Miss Cass. She said, well, she's in the nursing home. You need to go see her. You know, uh, moms of grown boys still are moms of, of boys. And so I said, all right, mama, I'll do that. So I went over to the nursing home while I was at home at that time and walked in the room and I saw this person lying there and I thought, well, that's, that's not Miss Cass. Uh, so I stepped back outside and asked the nurse. She said, oh, oh yes, that's it. So then I got up closer and, and she opened her eyes, just this bony frame that she had had left. But then when she opened her eyes, I looked in her eyes. I thought, well, she's still in there uh, because she, uh, she, she recognized me. And, uh, oh, hey, Mike, how are you? And I've heard about you being engaged and about your ministry. And, you know, she just uh, talked on and on. She was quite alert. It just didn't seem that way because her body had just deteriorated uh, so so very much. So we chatted a little bit. I didn't tell you this, but whenever our groups from our church would go visit with the Casses, Mrs. Cass would always say to somebody in the group, "Now you lead us in prayer," and then you know one of us teenagers or one of the ministers of the church would lead in prayer, and then after that prayer, Miss Cass would always pray, hmm. and then when Miss Cass prayed. Well, heaven came down, you know, it was just, the room would just be filled with God's presence and so forth. Well, after I visited with Miss Cass that day, I said, no, uh, Miss Cass, we'll, we'll have prayer for you. She said, oh yeah, I want you to pray for me. And she reached out and took my hand and I prayed for her the best way I knew how as a young preacher boy and thank God for her and her husband and what she meant, all, all that. Then when I got through praying, I knew what was going to happen next. Miss Cass was going to pray for me, and she did. And with that bony hand in mine, she clamped down on my hand, and she prayed a prayer for me and my wife-to-be and my ministry to come and the years ahead. And I just felt God's presence come into that room so gloriously and so powerfully and uh, just was blessed. I mean, I, I got blessed with Miss Cass's prayer. Well, we got through and I left the room and went outside. And as I was going toward my car, I thought, you know, I came here today to strengthen Miss Cass. Instead, Mrs. Cass strengthened me. And there she was, so frail, you know, so gaunt, just not much left, humanly speaking, but the strength of the Lord that was hers. Wasn't it Nehemiah that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. strength. And that's where strength comes from, the Lord God and the joy that he, he gives. And when we think about praying that prayer, Lord, strengthen me. It's a good prayer to pray. So we've had David's prayer, search me. Simon Peter's prayer, save me. Moses' prayer, show me. Samson's prayer, strengthen me. Now I know several of you are going to get this one. What's the last one? This is send me. S E N D. Send me. Good guess. Paul certainly was sent. There ain't no doubt about that. Over and over again, Paul, if he didn't say those words, he certainly had that uh, mission send me. But no, this is a, well, it's a right prophet, recorded right? in Scripture. Send me. The prophet. The prophet? Yes. What was Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. Yes, that's found in one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And that is what we call Isaiah's call into the ministry, his call as a prophet. And you remember that's uh, really, you almost have to read beginning in verse 1 of chapter 6 of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two wings he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one seraphim cried. You know, the seraphim is an angelic being. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, 
Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and now my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal from which he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. And I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for me? And I said, Here am I, send me, send me. And the Lord said, Go, send me. Well, I think if we prayed, Search me and save me and show me and strengthen me, we certainly want to pray, send me. You know, uh, there, I, there's, there's never a church that God won't do a miracle for. There's never a person that God won't do a miracle for. And if we're ready and willing and saying, Lord, here am I, send me, God has promised to send us. So, you know, I, I don't know everything that God has in store for the future of, of Dale Wood Baptist Church. I know that uh, a lot of things have happened to uh, sort of shrink the numbers. But you know, uh, God can do great things in small numbers. He shows that over and over again in the Bible. The little boy with nothing but loaves and fishes. Uh, the small band of 300 of Gideon's men. Uh, numbers are, are not what counts with God. What counts with God is that we be obedient to him and do his will. And so I think in a new, fresh way, God is saying to Dale Wood Baptist, who, who will go for us? And I think Dale Wood Baptist needs to say, Lord, here, here we are. Send us. Now, what does that mean? What, what's he going to do? To say, I, I don't know. I believe that there are some young people that would be called out into Christian service who have not yet been called, who could be called through Dale Wood Baptist Church. I think there's some boys and girls who are unsaved and going to live on into their lives unsaved unless there's a witness that Dale Wood Baptist Church gives to them. I think there are grown men and women who need God in their marriages and in their lives, in their finances, in their homes, in their jobs. And Dale Wood Baptist Church is going to be able to make a difference in their lives. So I think we can say, Lord, we don't know what it means, but we know that we want to pray, Lord, send me. May I be a voice crying in the wilderness like John the Baptist. May I be a, a, a witness for you. May I, may I serve you, Lord. Send me. So I think just like these saints of old, you and I can pray these kinds of prayers. They don't have to be eloquent prayers, do they? You remember the little boy that said to it, called out to his dad one night, and he said, Oh, wise and gracious Father, would you look in tender mercy <coughs> to your son and quench his thirst? No little boy would ever say that, would he? He'd just say, Dad, I need a drink of water. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thirsty. Well, God doesn't have to have eloquent uh, prayers. They can, be, they can be simple prayers, specific prayers, pointed prayers. But just like these five short prayers, if we're willing to come and be honest with God, God is willing to hear our prayers. I believe he's willing to hear the prayer for Dalewood for this season. I, I, don't, I don't understand everything about this season, but I know God has not changed, has he? No. The, the same God who was here when Dalewood was very first formed, the God who's been here through the various pastors and the various seasons, He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we can say, Lord, here we pray these prayers, and especially that last one. Lord, send us out into the community, out into this area, this region, out into the world, sharing the gospel of Jesus. And I believe that's what God wants to do. So may we pray these five prayers, and uh, we'll, we'll join together in a moment of, of closing prayer. As we pray together, uh, those of you who've joined us by the phone and those of us who are in, in the room, in the fireside room here, maybe, maybe there's a way in which you need to specifically pray one of these five prayers. I think 
Surely all of us gathered together tonight have at one point prayed, Lord, save me. But there may be an area of your life where still you need to have God's grace and his goodness to shine. Maybe, maybe you have stepped out and yet feel like you're sinking or have sunk. Maybe, maybe there's some areas where it feels like failure to you. Maybe you're just uh, struggling with some uh, attitude or unforgiveness. And Jesus the Savior needs to speak to you. Certainly, if you've not nailed down your salvation, we give you an opportunity to say, Lord, save me. But if it's some other area that you know you need rescuing from, I encourage you to pray that prayer. Or maybe tonight, it needs to be that searchlight of God's grace to shine down. And you say, search me, God. Show, show me something I've been missing that's not pleasing to you. Reveal it to me so that I can have that cleansing salvation that you bring. Maybe, maybe we do need to come and ask God to show us his glory, show us his way. Maybe those of us who are here tonight are on the phone need to pray Samson's prayer. Strengthen me, Lord. I feel so weak. Or Isaiah's prayer send me maybe you know it needs to be our church's prayer send us lord help us not just to look for things that you send to us help us to look for ways that you send us out make us mindful so as we close this time we ask god's blessings on each of us we do thank those of you who've joined us on the phones and those of you who've come in person tonight Father, we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for joining us uh, online. Thank you so much.